Hi guys, uh, last night we did a little bit of a color along um, and we made, or we colored this image here and there's two different cards I made with it. And I did record the whole process, but it was really, really long and kind of tedious. So I thought I would make a short version of this project for everybody so they don't have to watch two hours of footage from our little class last night. So the image is from House Mouse. It's an old retired in image. It is so adorable. The first thing I'm going to do is color the skin, and my favorite skin shades are E000, E00, and E93. And when I color this, um, I like to take the E000 and coat the entire skin. I'm going to do his ears. As well, and his little hand, because they're all right here in the same area. Then I come in with my E00 and I'm going to flick in on either side of the face down towards the nose and I'm going to put a little bit of color in this little V shape here that they have in their ears. And it's starting to give the shape or the face some shape. Then I, E93 is a really nice pink. It's soft. And it works really well to warm this up and give it a little bit of color here on his nose and his ears. And I just like to blend that out with E000. And we have a cute little face. Now I forgot to do his little hand, so I'm just going to come in with E00 and just add a little bit of color there. Now I'm going to do the same with this hand. and also his tail. So this is E triple zero. And now the shadow is gonna be on the underside of the tail, but it has a curl here. So now it's gonna be on this side. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of that E double zero and do the same with the E93. And it just kind of, I, I love that E93. It just, you know, makes the mouse feel alive. All right. So we got our first little skin on our mouse done. Let's pop over here and do this guy while we have these markers out. Doing the same thing. I'm just going to coat his face and I'm going to do his ear at the same time. And this time I'm just going to flick in from the side here and then down his nose this way. And I am going to put a real tiny bit under his, um, where his mouth is. A little bit of E93 and blend that out with my E000. Oh, I forgot to do his ear. Sometimes I do that. So come back in with my E double O. What it's okay to forget, I think, with these markers. I mean, if you're doing like reds, but these are so forgiving that it's not not a big deal if you forget to go back and have to reblend. Wondering if I did that on this hand too. Hand looked a little light, so I added a little more color there. I think that looks better. Okay. So I added it to his hands and to his little feet. To his tail. Yeah, you double O. Again, along the bottom, I'm just dabbing a little bit of color here. And then blending out with E triple zero. Okay. 
Now, his skin might look a little dark to you at this point, but that's because everything else is white. And as we go through and add browns and yellows, it's going to look a lot better. So now I'm pulling out E35, E33, E31, and E30. And I'm going to start with my E35. And I'm going to color in the direction of the fur growth. I'm just going to put little flicks along the edge of his body. And I imagine his arm is here. Kind of goes up a little bit. Again, in the same direction as fur growth. I'm just putting a tiny little shadow in here behind this lemon. Little flicks of fur around his chin, ears. How cute. Maybe a little bit just right here on this lemon. And now I'm going to get, my flicks are going to get bigger because I'm doing E33, but it's still not huge, but bigger. And I'm going to put a couple here in the center. I think it breaks up that space a little bit. Now E31, just continuing with that process. And they're getting bigger as your colors are getting lighter. And then E30, I'll just go in and fill in that last little bit. Okay. Now I might go back in here if you feel like an area is not dark enough, like I feel like right in here should be a little darker, I can come back in with this is E31 and I'm just darkening up a few areas. Remember you can always go darker, you can't go lighter. So if you you can, you know, add more, but you can't take anything off. So there we go. All right, I feel like that looks better to me, so I'm going to be okay with leaving him like that. And now we can come on over here and do this guy, and it's the same process. So around the edge of his body, we're going to put in um, the E35. And around his face and around his chin and I see how little I'm doing though this is very very little I don't want to put a ton and I'm trying to make marks that go in the direction of the fur a little bit in here All right, and now I'm going to come in with E33. There is not a lot of difference, I think, in shades between E35 and E33. They're pretty similar, but it is, I would say, a tad lighter. So I'm just extending a little bit on that E35, but try not to go nuts. If you wanted to skip either E33 or E35, you could easily do that. But E31 is a nice one to... To me, that is the color of the mouse. Make sure you're going around your little drop of, of juice there. We don't want to... lose our lemon juice, because that's part of the fun here. And now I'm going in with E30, and I'm just closing up because I don't want any of my mouse to look white. So this is making my highlight just a real light shade of brown. And I'm pretty happy with him. I see one little spot here on the side of the... There we go. It makes them look a little bit more fuzzy. Cool. All right, so we're done with our browns. We can go ahead and put those away. All right, for my lemon, I'm going to use YO8, YO4, YO2, and YOO for my lemon. 
And I'm going to start with YO8 along the bottom of this lemon slice here. And I'm purposely leaving this juice alone. I don't want to touch that right now. I'm going to fill in this little area with this tail. And technically there'd be a little shadow here, so I don't want it to be a big shadow. So I'm just going to drop in a tiny bit of color right there. Now I'm going to take my Y04 and I'm going to start pushing that Y08 towards the center of that lemon blending out that Y08. And same here, just a little bit pushing that down. Then I'm going to repeat that process with the Y02. And then my Y00, blending these together. And I love how my this gives me a highlight right here. On my lemon. Now, if you need to, because we blended out all that Y08, you can go back and put a little bit of Y08 here. It's just gonna darken up that edge, making it feel you know grounded, I guess, or maybe that's not the right word, but like I don't know that it's at the bottom. And then when we have that Y08, I imagine that there is a little bit of the lemon peel here. So I'm going to put a little bit of Y08 there. And where it's squished, it's going to be a little bit darker, at least in my imagination. And then I'm going to take Y04, and I'm going to blend that out. Y02. And lastly, Y00. Now, last night and also today, um, I think there's it's harder to get the contrast in this piece here. It's harder to get the contrast in this piece here. So I am going to go back and add that Y08 to make, I want it to feel like there is a peel or something that he's hanging on to. Just adds a little bit of that in there and then because I want it to look like there's like creases and crevices in this lemon I'm just putting real lightly like some squiggles where the artist put those little black lines of the 08 and I'm hoping that translates into you know crevices and little nooks in the lemon now let's do this guy he's actually a little easier because he's not a squish lemon Putting a little bit of that Y08. And why the Ys blend so easily. I would never recommend doing that with your red marker, but your Y markers you can do that with. Put a little line there and then blend it out with your lighter colors. It works really well with the yellows. So if you're just getting started with Copics, know that all the markers work a little differently and yellows are a dream to work with. They're so easy to blend. So I just went through all the colors like we did the other times, just cleaning that up, and I love that that looks darker. So now here we have this little bite. Now I have no idea what the reality is, but in my little imagination, and because I want this to stand out, I'm going to put my Y08 in that bite mark because I want it to be more noticeable. And again, just like before, I'm just darkening up my peel a little bit and adding in some crevice lines there. While I have my Y08 out, I'm not going to do anything crazy here. I'm just going to fill that in, all the juice marks that are up here in the air. And again, I'm doing that because I want them to stand out. If we did Y00, it's very light and it's not going to be as noticeable. But on the bottom, I am going to use my Y04. I want it to be a different color than the lemon here. So I'm kind of using this to my advantage, using Y04, and then I'm going to put a little bit of Y00 and blend that out, I think. So see the contrast, so the lemon's dark, the juice is light. 
dark. I don't think like our eyes really notice that so much, but I think it helps make the image feel, I don't know, complete, I guess. Maybe it's just my imagination. All right, we're all done with yellow, so we can pop those away. Now I'm pulling out W3, W1, and W, and I'm going to ground my image. And when I ground my image, I almost always turn my image to the side. I feel like this is easier for me because you're going to be doing like these lengthwise strokes here along the bottom. So wherever the image is touching the ground, it's going to get W3. But like you don't put it all the way across because we're not trying to make like a board that it's standing on. We're just trying to um, provide some weight to the image so it doesn't look like it's floating. So that's W3. Now I'm going to start coming out with W1 and blending this out. And the 1 can go farther than the 3. And then carry that on out with your W0. Now, someone asked me in class, you know, do you have to go all the way across the card? And I say it all is situational. And this piece here is so small that, yeah, I probably will, you know, go across because the image is pretty much the whole width of the paper. If um, it wasn't, I probably would not. I would go probably most of the way, but not the whole way. So there we go. So just a few little tiny um, finishing touches here. I'm going to grab my BV20 and my BV23, and we're going to add some really deep shadows here. And we want to be very light-handed when we do this. Um, too much is going to make it look funny. But inside the little nooks of the ears, I like to put that shadow on. I think it gives the ears more shape. I also like to put a little bit at the base of the tail. And on this guy, I was looking for feet. He doesn't have feet. This one here. Put a little bit by his mouth if you'd like. And I think that looks pretty good. So that would be the shadows in his skin. Now to do the shadows in the fur, we're going to do the BB23. And again, we're going to go very lightly with this. But where we're going to notice it the most is that his arm actually extends, you know, into his body. So we're continuing that line of his arm and just putting a little shadow there. And that's going to give his arm more shape. You can also do this a little bit along the side of his head. It kind of makes his head, you know, come forward. Wherever you're putting the dark, you're actually pushing that back. So on this guy, his head is in front of his body. So I'm going to put a little bit here and a little bit under the bottom here. I'm trying to think of anywhere else. I think that's it for him. You could spend all day and go nuts with, with this, but... I think that looks pretty good. So those are some finishing touches with shadows. The thing I, I like to do, and I often do, I either usually use, and actually let's do both here. Um, I forgot to use this last night when I was doing the class, but sometimes I like to put a little bit of white gel pen and, on my coloring. And I'm just gonna put little dots here it just gives it a little interest. It's so subtle. You're not even, probably can't even see it. You even notice? Probably not. It is really light on this yellow. Not going to be that big of a deal. So if you didn't do that last night or whatever, don't worry about that. The part that's really cool is this is a Stardust pen. And it puts just a tiny bit of glitter. And I just like to put some lines in here on the lemon and I'll put a couple dots over here and it just makes it shine and gives it a finishing touch to your artwork. Let me see if I can, can you guys see that at all? 
it's one of my favorite things to do when I'm coloring. Try to. All right. Okay, so now we can um, glue this together. All right, so here's my finished card. Um, I glued it all together. The inside of it, it says, if life gives you lemons, and on the inside it says, squirt someone in the eye. And I stamped the image in a light gray just to kind of carry the joke all the way through the card. If you notice, my card has a little bit of like a gray chevron pattern in there and I just thought that was kind of silly and worked perfectly for this card. It was some cardstock I had in my stash so it works really well. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Here's the other version of the same card I made or same image. Um, if you have any questions let me know and I hope you guys have fun crafting. Talk to you guys soon. Bye.